So guys, welcome back. My name is Mike. So in today's video, we're going to be starting to fit the kitchen. So all the electrics are done. All the lights are done. So yeah, flat pack time. These are all my units. Here's my plan. So today, we're going to be concentrating on just this area here for now. And then I can finally cook a decent meal. Then we've got all these to do today as well, but Mainly, this area here next to the door is where the oven's going to go. So on that side, so on this corner here, close to that box in, if you remember where the stop top is. So there's a 400 unit there, base unit, then there's 600 cooker housing, then there's a 500 drawer unit there, <coughs> then obviously above it will be the extractor fan, but I'm not too bothered about that today, obviously a bit of work top. So, that's what we're on with, feels like I've been without a kitchen for ages, there's been a lot of work gone into this kitchen, a lot of dot and dabbing, all the walls were ruined really so yeah it's going to be nice to finally get a kitchen that's actually working usable so yeah looking forward to it so I'll get cracking I'll build some of these units up then I'll come back to you it's pointless you're watching me build your flat pack so I'll be back very soon right then guys <coughs> these three units all built up, they're all screwed back to the wall, all nice and level. You want to double check your level obviously that way and this way as well, which is good. When I'm screwing the units together, you always want to use a clamp, just clamp them together, you get this edge nice and flat where they, where they both meet. Then once you put a screw through it, it doesn't pull it apart. So it's a good little tip there. The only snag I've run into is this wall's a bit out here. But that doesn't matter, the, uh, the work top will go over there. So yeah, so this is just a bone cupboard, just base unit. This is the oven housing. So the oven basin is on top of here. And then this one is gonna be in a set of drawers. <coughs> so yeah, that's good, finally coming together. When you set your height of the unit, I'll show you. We're gonna film this side over here. I'll, I'll show you. But my my plinth's about 165 mm. So I always do it. I always do the bottom, the legs to the bottom, from the bottom of the unit to the floor, an extra 10, 12 mm. Just then, once you, once you've done your finished floor level whether you have tiles, laminate, whatever, the plinths will just slot right in and you don't need to trim them up. So yeah, finally getting the kitchen in. I'm gonna go 
off to this side next. Which is that over here. The thousand in that corner there. Then there's an eight. Then there's a, I think it's a four or a five. So there's three there. A space for the washing machine and then another thousand base unit to go just under the window for the sink. <coughs> so yeah, that's good. So I've built a few more. Once I've built all of these, I'll come back and then uh, I'll show you how to join them together. Right then guys. <coughs> Onto this corner post bit at the moment. So this, we'll go on the end of this unit here, and then there's another unit here to bridge it. So I haven't really fitted many of these before, so I've just been having a bit of a play. I think I've, I've come up with a good a good way of securing it. So I've put the door, I've put the door onto this unit here, got it, got it to open in the right way. And I've just put some little, just some of them, just some little old brackets, I put one there and one at the bottom here. That needs to be fastened onto there like so. But you also need the gap for the dot. So what I've come up with is I'm going to use one of these as a spacer. If I rest that on the door there, if I get this where I want it. And then again on the bottom. So I've got it clamped at the top, clamped at the bottom. So that if I move this door, there go. that allows it to open quite nicely. So you can see where the bracket is here. So now, let's take, you, take a screw from the drill. Just simply screw it in. Same with the bottom. So now can we release the clamps? Maybe over here again. That opens 
quite nicely now. The other thing I've done is obviously once it's other units in here, it butts up to there. So you're going to have a big void here. And if you put any pots or pans or anything in the cupboard, they're just going to fall through this gap that's going to be at the bottom. So I've cut a bit of wood, which I'm just going to simply screw onto there. You're not going to see, see it, so it doesn't need to be painted or anything like that. It's simply just to hide the mess, basically. Two at the top, two at the bottom will be fine. Corner for secure. <clears throat> we filled the gap in at the back just to stop any pots, pans, or whatever you have in the cupboard. So now the next thing, so you can see a bit better now. So yeah, this is the gap I was talking about. So now we need to line this piece up so it's flush with this door and this other unit. Again, I'm gonna use my, these spaces. Get it absolutely straight. If I can find the other one. But the other thing, we don't want this to be twisted, so we need to maintain this gap. So if I measure from the this wood here, about 50 mil. So I'll keep that 50 mil there. Now there's no way of securing this unit to that post to stop it moving. So, so I've just got an off cut piece of CLS timber. You, I mean you can use any, any wood you want. And that's basically gonna go I'm going to fasten it through here, I'm just going to screw through to here. Again, just get a clamp. Make sure that's stayed the same distance there to there. Simply screw through. So 
So you can see there, that piece of wood is now screwed to this unit here. Still got my spacer in there. And now, from the other unit, make sure it's right where you want it. So this door opens nicely now. Nicely. Just thought I'd show that bit because it's quite. I don't even know how to fasten it all together. So next, I'm gonna get all these units leveled down now, and then I'll secure them to the wall. This side's sort of done. I just need to cut out for the hop. So I'll do that. I'll do that. Maybe, I might do that tomorrow after work. So I'm just going to concentrate on this side for now. Get all these leveled out. None of these are. They're not in yet, I'll fasten to the wall or anything, so that's today's job. What's up guys? My name is Mike, thanks for joining me. In today's video, we're going to be cutting out, I'm going to show you how to mark out and cut out the uh, kitchen sink in your worktop. I am doing a video on the entire kitchen, so this will be added to it but i thought it's quite a key moment in the kitchen this <coughs> so i thought some people might want to know how it's done so basically get your sink where you want it mark it up I've done this one 55 mil from the edge of the worktop. So 55 mil from the edge of the worktop here to the front of the sink. So I've marked it there, marked it there. And it was about 50 mil at the end there. Then we just with your pencil. Just literally draw, found it. Just move that out of the way. So now you're left with the outline of the sink. So, what you want to do now is with your tape measure, I might do it in pen, it's easier for you to see. So, with your tape measure, just measure 10 mil in from the line so that's obviously the edge there so you measure into the sink 10 mil and you want to do this all the way around to do it on all four 
four edges. So once you've got your marks, take a straight edge. You can use level, bit of wood, whatever you want. And just connect them lines up. This is so we're going to cut to that line, not that line, that line, all the way around. But before you do that, just take some masking tape. Just helps prevent splitting of the uh, worktop. Just go over your line. So now, with your circular saw, I'm going to set your depth. So just place it on the end, get your depth where you want it. I like to go through a little bit more, just in case it'll mark the underside, you'll see in a minute. So, basically, Start cutting out your circular saw.
once you've done the front and done the back, take a bit scrap bit of wood, which is about the width of the, of the work top. Get a screw. And just screw it all the way through. Just like so. That, that. Then when you cut the ends, the work top doesn't drop through. snapped and make sure you stay on the line screwed on. Just simply lift it out. Yeah. Now the 
this bit here. Obviously the sink work won't go in with that. So if you line your sink up, and your pen or your pencil, Mark. Do a couple of rough marks where you need to chop. I must have the stickiest masking tape ever. Give it a brush. My worktop's not fastened in yet, so that's why that's moving about. I'm gonna again try your sink. Should just slot right in now, like so. So that is how you do it. <clears throat> Obviously next the next stage will be putting your clips on and securing it underneath. This video is simply just showing you how to cut it. I will give you a little tip though when you do actually come to um, fit in your sink. This edge here, the rough edge where you've obviously cut the, the piece out, if you get some clear, clear silicon, put some silicon on the edge and just brush it in with your finger, it'll help seal this in the future if anything ever leaks you don't want this wood to split so I've got the hop to do next as well 
but that'll be in the kitchen video. There's a little sneak peek of the kitchen. So yeah, that's it. If you like that video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and join me for the next one. Thank you. Right then, guys. I've made a bit of progress since the last bit you've seen. So, so all my base units are in now. All the sides in. I haven't done these set of drawers yet, but I've cut out for the hob, and I've also I've literally just cut out for the kitchen sink. I have done a separate video on that because it's quite a vital bit of the kitchen I think so I will add it to this video but if you just want to see that then it's on the channel anyway. So the next step I need to secure this worktop. I've done I've done this end down here I need to do this end now. So basically, it'll, your kitchen pack will come with these little black plastic things, and in each base unit, there's a little hole there. Look, you basically just Get it in, give it a little tap. Then with a screw. You don't want one that's gonna go through the worktop, obviously. The screws do actually come with the units. We also need to fasten this side. Obviously, most of this has been cut out now for the kitchen sink. So, just basically find, you can sort of see underneath, find where the screw needs to be. So I'm gonna put one there, I think. Put another one in here. So, that's pretty much it. There's also one there which I've already done. So that's nice, nice and secure now. and balance you with my I've got a little a new little tripod but I don't think it's very good. So next job before we fit the kitchen sink this roof edge here where I've cut it needs sealing so I just use some silicon. Just run some silicon along all the way. So you can 
can see it there. Then you basically with your finger, just rub it in. So it covers all that exposed wood. <coughs> Obviously, the kitchen sink has a lot of water passing through it all the time so if you spill any on the side you don't want it to seep into the wood because it can expand and then it can ruin your, um, your work top it's always I mean you don't have to do this but it's just good practice I think it just don't have to be neat I mean you don't want it all over the work top but just get it in. Like I said, make sure you try and cover all the exposed wood. And just take a wipe, clean your fingers off, and just go along the top just in case you've got any on. Once your sink's in, once you get it clipped down and use the seal that comes with the sink, you won't get any water ingress into the worktop then. So, I'm going to pipe the sink up next, but I think I'm going to leave this video there for now. I think it's getting a bit long. So, I'll, uh, part two. I'll probably do the wall units, the plimps, and maybe put the handles on and stuff like that. So, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, like it, subscribe, and stick about for part two. Thank you.